Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the um, second to last day, I think, of the third to last day of our St. Bart's project. Um, you're joined by George, me, George from Future Chatham, and Natasha from Craterbot as part of the St. Bartholomew's Hospital project. So over the past week, we've been taking a closer look at the hospital, looking at you know, the, the history of it um, as the historic heart of health in Medway, caring for the local people for over 900 years, which is extraordinary. So today's session, we'll be taking a closer look at the um, hospital uh, wards, the facilities, how they changed over time, um, but particularly as well, we'll be looking at things like the artwork, um, as well as the, its role in a tragic railway accident back in August 1944. So today will be quite full of, full of information and I think it'll also jog the memory of a lot of former staff members from the hospital. Um, so if you're watching this or afterwards then please do get in touch, share your stories, memories and experiences about the hospital and about how it was to work there. So without further ado, without further ado we'll get going with today's session. So um, in terms of the hospital, um, it was, of course, on, on Monday, we covered the medieval beginnings of it, how it was actually originally in Chatham, uh, between, in the high street between Chatham and Rochester, um, back in 1078 when it was founded. Later, the hospital, a uh, new hospital building was proposed and built, the one that we know today on New Road, um, and that was back in 1861. It was, it was in, 84, in the 1840s, there was a map which actually showed the site as undeveloped at the time. And it was actually used as a market garden, which I didn't know about. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and it was later in 1861 when the plans were first drawn up by the architect Robert Philip uh, Pope. Um, and about a year, two years, three years afterwards, the new St. Bart's Hospital was built um, uh, with Alfred Stump as the contract for it. Um, and over time, the site was enlarged and more buildings were actually uh, occupying the hospital site. Um, there was later in 1866, a map suggests that the Bethel Chapel uh, and its bur burial ground uh, to the west of the hospital um, was there in existence. Um, and, and yeah, um, and I've also got the original um, plans, the ground floor and first floor plans from the 1861 architect drawings of the hospital, um, which you can see there. Oh, wow. So you've got amazing. each, you can see different wards. Um, I mean, unfortunately, it's not in good quality, but you can see the ground floor plan of wow. the original hospital at the time. And you've also got the first floor plan over here. Um, these floor plans were retrieved from um, planning application for the new Ooh. hospital. Oh. Comment, <laughs> for, comment. The, yeah, for the new hospital um, renovation works that are going on now, um, sent in by Medway Archive Centre to um, the, the company, what was it called? Heritage Collective, which prepared it on behalf of the developer. So they should so, have the they should have that then the archive yeah, should, yeah exciting for yeah exciting from for there. Later. yeah um yeah and then later on I mean as part of the original uh, building of course on Wednesday Natasha covered uh, the lock ward that was in the hospital um, and that lasts until 1870 uh, in the hospital's west wing um, and that was originally designed and built as the specialist lock ward care. Uh, for care of patients, uh, which of course, as I say, on Wednesday we covered, um, and that continued in its current in its use at the time until 1870, um, and since then it's been very much altered with no reference to its original use uh, remaining. Later on, it was 1894 when the west wing of the hospital, built in about uh, 1862, 1863 as well, um, wasn't open for patients until 1894. Um, potentially due to the initial shortage of funds. And of course, we did cover the uh, monetary problems back on the first session Monday. Um, and the opening of the West Wing in 1894 increased the number of beds in the hospital from 50 to a grand total of 72. Okay. Um, so that was quite interesting that until for quite, for quite a period of time, it wasn't in use. 
uh, which is quite a shame. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I wonder if, because obviously that drained them and then they asked about being able to support men, men having injuries at the dockyard and maybe that mm -hmm. was being maybe they just decided to do that somewhere else in the hospital yeah. maybe because the women have smashed it up so much <laughs> they they, yeah. couldn't afford oh, to repair yeah, it yeah. yeah and then it was later in um 1900 uh when more facilities began to pop up in the hospital so there was the new operating theater um the children's wards and the hydraulic lift um and those were um of course through the donations and a further donation to the hospital allowed the new nurses home to be constructed. Um, Natasha, I think we've got a photo of the children's ward, haven't we? Uh, yeah. What year was the um uh oh, what did what did you just list again? Uh the operating theatre, children's ward, lift and the new nurses home. Oh yeah, what year? So what year was the nurses home built? I think, I mean, I'm not sure whether that was in 1900 as well um but yeah around early 20th century right okay about yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah so it's, it's like a tw 20s 30s building yeah yeah. because yeah. i wasn't sure because it kind of looks like it could almost be 50s or newer mm. but also a lot of people said no i think they was before then you know yeah so this is yeah so this was the children ward, children's ward which i believe would have been called the spong I think that's how we're saying it, but it's after, um, was it Catherine Spong? What did I write on my list? Uh, yeah, Catherine Spong Ward was a children's ward until January 1972. Does that match up with what? Or did they move the children's ward around, I wonder? I believe so. I think that matches. Because right. yeah. that looks very light in there. Hmm. And the children's ward that then moved to All Saints, everyone has said was quite dark and was at the bottom, which hmm. kind of makes sense with it being, from what people are saying, in the West Wing, in the essentially in the basement or the fourth ground floor, yeah. which means you'd be looking into the bank. Um, so maybe it was in, higher up in the... Did you, you said it was the West Wing, didn't you, the children's ward? West Wing, I think. We're yeah. not sure, yeah. Believe Maybe it it's jumped around on what floor it was on, but this this photo makes it look really quite bright. Mm. Um, yeah. So I feel like would they have really put it in the before like artificial lighting came in as much as it is now? Because it's all looks like it's probably oil lamps in there. Maybe electric, but still wouldn't be as powerful as having yeah. like you know 50s 60s 70s artificial lighting Possibly. but i really like how bright and airy it is and how um how there's plants in there and um lovely beautiful artworks on the walls by the yes, way they're like proper the paintings yeah yeah. Yeah, loads of them. yeah and there's a there is an, an initiative in the uk which is called paintings in hospitals and it just makes me and they 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 know that it can be really connected towards well-being, having lovely artwork up in a hospital. And it just, I mean, yeah, huge paintings up. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really, really nice to see that art was in this hospital. How cool is that? Yeah. Even in the, you know, Victorian era. Oh, I don't have a date for this, do I? Sorry. I should have. Uh, but yeah, this is clearly like a Victorian era photo, isn't it? So, yeah. 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 So, yeah, really beautiful. Fantastic, yeah. Um, and then from there, of course, the children's ward and the nurses' home, it was later in 1907, um, an OS map uh, shows the former waterworks, which I'll cover quite shortly. Um, that became a, um, it was taken up by the hospital and included as part of the site. Um, and you had the nurses' ward built to the northeastern corner of the hospital site at the time as well from some of the information I found. Um, 1919, later on again, uh, a new pathological laboratory is brought into use in the hospital for the first time. Um, it was more up to date um, with a later version also subsequently created in the late 1920s, 30s in what was old Waterworks, which again, I'll be covering quite shortly. Um, 
1928, uh, there was the foundation that the launch of the Association of the Friends of St. Bartholomew's Hospital, um, a group of, so I think it was staff members and local people, if I'm not wrong. Right. Yeah. And they um, enabled the creation of a new operating theatre unit oh, wow. um, with two theatres for patients, um, some more auxiliary, auxiliary rooms. That's one for oh, work. Yeah. <laughs> and more room for um, some orthoped, orthopedic work as well. Um, so that's quite interesting. And it is around the 1930s, essentially, where a lot of St. Bartholomew's Hospital was beginning to extend outwards, um, <laughs> literally in all directions, west, east. Um, so it's about around 1932, um, where we weren't able to actually find out what the current use of the building was. Um, but there was another building in 1932 that popped up. It was built uh, towards the west of the hospital building. Um, it's unsure as to when it was demolished, but at the moment it's literally just a concrete slab, uh, pretty much. Um, but yeah, when we go through the, the walls and the map, we'll show where that is and hopefully someone will be able to point us in the right direction as, as to its use. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was later on 1948. Um, by 1948, actually, yeah, the hospital was able to accommodate up to around 200 patients, 201 patients, which was which jump, of course, from, from um, 1894 when it was about 72 and previously 50. Yeah. So it was yeah. quite a quite a jump um, in terms of hospital capacity. Yeah. And. And yeah, and it was about 1953, um, a, a more later OS map, again, uh, showed the creation of a tennis court for, uh, to the south of the hospital. Okay. And so I that think, was by the nurse's accommodation then? Yes, it yeah. was, yeah. And it's right. currently, I think that's empty as well. I think it was maybe used as overflow car parking. It's pretty right. much in the corner of the top of uh, New Road and Gundolf Road, where it goes okay. down. Right, but okay, right, is covering the site right. at the moment okay so that's quite interesting and i think the tennis court was used by the staff i'm assuming yeah yeah that's patients. what someone else had someone else had said that yeah it was like the tennis courts were for the nurses mainly so so in about 1962 uh, they opened up a rehab center oh rehab. a rehab center okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and a gymnasium okay. um, and that was followed by the creation of two new wards and the reconstruction of the nurses home in the northeast of the site. Oh right. So yeah, so I what, refurbished? Do you think? Re yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, so as a whole, in terms of the layout of the hospital, it's been uh, preserved. In, internally, it's been preserved on the whole. It hasn't really been altered much uh, to this current day. Um, and in terms of the some of the features inside, there were. Um, two very attractive stair court cases with attractive iron balustrades uh, inside the property. I think they may oh, be... Oh, so is that maybe iron, not wood? Wow. Yeah. I think they, they're the... I'm assuming they're the ones with the flowers. With the flowers on. on. Yeah, the flowers I'll, find, on. I'll find a picture. I'll find yeah. A picture. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I checked whether... Um, that was indeed um because it almost looked like it was painted on the wall mm. yeah um, but um yeah no yeah. kim said that no that is a shadow because it yeah. really looks like wood there doesn't it but i guess where it's just dusty yeah <laughs> it like anything it, wow they made it's actually quite interesting because the windows also have the flower design on them okay um, so they do they do yeah i think if i was able to if i'm able to share that as yeah. well um yeah there you go it seems like yeah yeah seems like quite a like a trademark like a, a brand almost for St. Bart's I think I found one on the medieval chapel as well did I is that in the drive because I did yeah. just go on um <laughs> just went on like google uh, street view maybe I didn't take one of the chapel in the end but yeah you can see it there on that bottom yeah, left yeah. photo yeah. Window, yeah yeah that window there yeah yeah quite oh, interesting yeah how these are small details that you don't usually pick up but um no yeah it seems like there we go the, the 
files were pretty much everywhere in terms of buildings internally and externally. Yeah, yeah. It's almost right. like you wonder whether it is like that wink back to the medieval era, like I was covering um, yesterday with thinking about artwork because of all yeah. these floral designs. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, and in terms of alongside the, the staircase, the video track, the staircase, and of course the flower designs, there was also on the second floor, there was a principal room, um, which includes some cornices, skirting boards and fireplaces along with murals which are likely to date from around 1920s um, according to um, the planning application for the new flats so it's quite nice to know that they've been preserved from what we're aware of and will probably be included as part of the new development I'll show the pictures yeah absolutely so i've got one which uh oh, hold on does that match up with oh okay uh, right, I'll do the little reveal first. So this is the sneak, the sneaky view of one of the pieces of artwork, like a close up. I thought it was beautiful with uh, yeah. George's dragon on, which is Definitely. just incredible. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I feel like we need a, a drum roll for this one. <laughs> wow. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah, like when it you think, so amazing. Yeah, when you think of hospitals, you wouldn't think of you know artwork on that sort of level really you know oh, no absolutely stunning and even like yeah the um the chimney there and it kind of looks like there's maybe like marble yeah within yeah. there as well yeah it looks like there's quite a variety of materials there and I'm, I'm assuming they were probably locally sourced as well at the time looks like there is some damage to the <laughs> um mural but yeah and this bit up here oh look there's my that is very that's 100 percent a, a wink at the medieval definitely it'll be really interesting to see what the text is as well yeah medieval. i know <laughs> oh, decipher that's it. tricky yeah i have to get um christopher monk on that again trying to mm. especially up here um yeah. i really hope they do preserve it um and then it'd be interesting to see who's going to get that flat. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be like the premium on uh, flat, probably. I don't know, but yeah, exactly. Be, they're very lucky. They'll definitely be a very lucky household. Oh yeah, I'll be. Yeah, we'll be trying to make friends with them, won't we? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah. Um, and in terms of other internal sort of architectural features that really stand out, um, that are still there. Uh, two narrow winding uh, staircases and they're accessed by small doorways. Um, oh, I've the, heard about this. At I've the corner the of the main staircase. In, yeah. yeah. People said that they're really unusual, actually, in terms of the way they look and how they go up. Sounds really interesting. Yeah, yeah I'll play a voice recording about that on uh, Saturday saturday or, oh, no, yeah, or Sunday tomorrow. about yeah. uh, one of the ladies that work there and her story of going through one of these little secret hidden doors mm, really? little stone cat yeah wow. it's a really good little story yeah that's fantastic and in terms of those murals actually um of course they've survived on the so they're on the second floor um and as i said they they were about 1920s but potentially a little bit earlier as well um, but unfortunately, one of the murals have were actually stolen, um, apparently, according to yeah. the planning application. Uh, one of the murals was stolen between April 2017 and August 2019. So it's obviously quite... Oh, a, so that was through probably an urban explorer, maybe, or probably. something. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, well, and of kind course, of, obviously, they were going to try and protect it, but you would kind yeah. of think, what if they're not going to? So that's interesting. So hopefully someone out there actually has it preserved. Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah, rather than destroyed. Yeah, we'd hope so. Yeah, and so. of course the mural that we saw there. I'm assuming. Yeah, because that one that was from 2020, I think. Well, Perfect. yeah. Whether they posted it up, they posted it up this year. Whether yeah. the explore was this year, I'm not sure because the developers yeah. went in. They probably did only go in at the beginning of February, didn't they? The developers. Mm, yeah, yeah, and. Yeah, and they say that the surviving mural was a bit damaged. So I'm assuming that must have been the one that we saw, the yeah. remaining mural. Yeah, um, that would make sense. Yeah, that's that's quite interesting. Um, there's also a film that we came across, didn't we? Yeah. Um, called St. Bartholomew's Hospital, quite nicely. 
and, and that was commissioned by the Association of the Friends of St. Bart's Hospital. And that was um, to raise funds to clear the hospital's overdraft in about 1930. So I think we'll later on uh, towards the afternoon or in the evening, uh, we'll send out a link to that if you haven't already seen it. It's really interesting and definitely worth the watch, I'd say, yeah. yeah. It's in the welcome collection, so, which is great. It hasn't got any audio, so you can add, you know, a bit of a uh, prodigy or whatever music you like in the <laughs> background. <laughs> <laughs> bit of drum and bass you know yeah 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 we've also got a comment actually just come in um from mandy and she's wondering about the tunnels that are supposed to be under the hospital right. i mean that's the thing natasha and i we've been really fascinated about the tunnels on medway um i mean what can we say i think there's 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 more to it definitely in terms of yeah. tunnels and there could be some potential links to the tunnel, the apparent tunnel network that was apparently all across Medway, really. Then, the, you know, there may be a tunnel that leads up to Fort Pitt, for all we know. Um, and of course, there are tunnel stories around the Luton Arches, the Great Lines. So, you know. I know that people, uh, the urban, a lot of urban explorers have gone to try and find something, but they've only ever found. Um, I don't know whether they would be places like for heating pipes and things. So they're mm. more like works tunnels rather yeah. than. But the thing is, is and I've even seen this in modern day, because if you go to Ramsgate tunnels and um, they started obviously kind of renovating it and opening it so the public could visit. And mm. it should have been a complete circuit on the seafront where you go in one entrance and you can come out the other end. But the council done a deal with uh southern, southern water i think or one of the kind of main infrastructure companies and which means that there's huge pipes in that other exit so you can't get out the end and it's just you just think that sometimes tunnels are repurposed for mm. so whether there had been something and um then it just got used of like, oh yeah, there's already a tunnel. Cause that's what happened. That's literally what happened in Ramsgate. They were going to dig a tunnel and then they're like, there's already one. We don't need to there's do it. Like, oh, yeah. So you think a lot of the time you wonder whether uh, they've made the use of things that are already there for electric and mm. water. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's quite interesting because when I went through some of the documents and stuff for this session, there wasn't any mention of tunnels or like underground structures. But I mean, that's the thing, potentially there may have been um, and they blocked up like many of the apparent tunnels in the area in Medway, for all we know. But that's the know. thing is because we know there are so many tunnels that we either have accessed and can't access any longer. Mm. We know they exist and they get found. That yeah. you just think, well, maybe there would be like another yeah. tunnel there. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. I think, no, there's definitely more to it. Um, when it comes to tunnels and particularly at St. Bart's there'll probably be some sort of association there yeah a lot of hospitals do in London um a lot of the hospitals connect to each other I've been I, I remember going through one of them where the old I'm sure it was like the old hospital connected to um it was like a maternity hospital and it went there was a tunnel that went under the road and um, I'm sure that they, in the tunnel, it was mainly used uh, for phlebotomy. So mm -hmm. like, and it was an air, one of those air chutes. Yeah. So yeah. Drop in the blood sample and it would go whoosh, along the tunnel. Oh. Yeah. You could walk past and the, I can't, I was really annoyed. They had a vacuum chamber type things. Yeah. Um, so that it would be sent to the other hospital. So to like the pathology labs for them to then test it. But you could, it was also a foot tunnel. And mm. I think it then went from like the older hospital to the newer to the newer one. So it's it's quite common to have these type of access points that are yeah, open yeah. staff or even for again kind of infrastructure. Yeah, and actually, yeah, um, Mandy just elaborated on a point about the tunnels um, at St. Bart's, and she said that it was um, there and it went uh, to all the hospitals and the dockyard. Apparently, like an extensive network. Mm. Um, and on Brompton Barracks, people have been down there as well through that tunnel. Um, and there are apparently still some benches and other sort of furniture left in there as part of the tunnel fixtures. Um, and Mandy says that as a kid, she remembers the lines collapsing uh, with some deep hole forming. So 
It seems like, yeah, I think the case, that's thing, the case for it is really strong, especially nowadays when yeah. people share their experiences and what, and what they know really about it. So, mm. exactly. Yep. The more stories, the better, because we, then it helps us to yeah. speak things together. Definitely. Yeah. So, so something I wanted to do as well now to like quickly uh, take a look over as well as the waterworks building, the original waterworks, which um, later became a mortuary for the hospital. Um, so for those that aren't really aware of what I'm on about uh, in terms of the waterworks, if you've ever walked around that area between Chatham and Rochester, um, potentially you may have seen this, let me show you actually, this sort of weird looking building. It looks, it's like a small castle really, uh, a small mini castle in the middle of um, the intra area between Chatham and Rochester and you can see those really attractive sort of you know castle like features um, so that's St Bart's Hospital as you can see there behind it um, and this is the original waterworks uh, building which later became the mortuary as I say so essentially what happened um, was so this original building was built in around 1809 um, very early on and it was actually built as and designed as a compact uh, Gothic body for the Garden of 351 High Street, um, which is just opposite. And some of you may know it as Chatham House. Um, and that was originally a master brewer's house for the Hulks Brewery um, on the other side, on the opposite side of the High Street. Um, and of course, so that building originally functioned as the water tower for the brewery. Uh, because I think it was the fact that there was a, a water stream or some. Yeah, apparently there is a spring there. A spring yeah. there, yeah. Because um, the Nags Head, apparently, would, uh, um, Rob was saying, Rob Flood, who knows lots about local history, was saying that yeah. the basement at the Nags Head would regularly flood. So, and it would make sense being that close to the river and Fort Pitt being such a big hill. Mm, yeah, 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 it really makes sense. Yeah. So, Originally, that building was actually part of the brewery. It had nothing to do. I mean, that's the thing, of course, St. Bartholomew's Hospital only came later on um, towards the early 19th century. Um, and that was built alongside a row of cottages called Hulk's Cottages. And uh, but unfortunately, we've lost them. And now they're actually where Hospital Lane is, okay. uh, which leads down to the high street. Um, and it was actually quite interesting to see that the waterworks had a landscape garden with a pond, benches, and it was really, it was really. I, like I think I might have seen some of those photos. It was really attractive, and I think the the idea was the fact that um, it had the waterworks had a really like high point uh, along the high street, and of course, if you saw, you know, it's this quite, it's it's a grand mini castle, so mm. to say, with a nice attractive garden, and I think that's the idea that there was that really high quality landscaping with it. Um, so, so yeah, so later on when St. Bartholomew's was built in the early 19th century. Um, the waterworks building was converted to hospital mortuary in around 1930, um, and then later on to a pathology lab. Um, and that was, that came along with some additions of unattractive extensions over time um, from around the 1930s and 50s, and pretty much really over the years, there were all sorts of different additions that tagged along the, um, the mortuary. I think I've actually got the, yeah, the plan of the mortuary. So you can see the water tower there um, early on. Yeah. It was quite small, it was just that really. Um, and then later on, you also had all those extensions. There was a chapel of rest, I'm able to zoom in. Um, yeah. A chapel of rest there we go chapel of rest you had the original water tower and you've also yeah you had the cold store examination room um, and some offices on the first floor as well of the building right. um, so that was quite interesting how yeah. you know it went from a water tower to a uh to mortuary and a pathology lab it's gone through quite a lot yeah really. So it dates, it dates the water tower on that as 16... 1600, yeah, which I don't quite understand so yeah. how it links up because from the resources, it says 1809 and apparently yeah. on, the, on the building itself, it actually has like, um, you know, how they've got like an engraved sort of... A date. 
date, saying 1809, and designed for the Hawks. Right, the yeah. So, yeah, that's well, that would match up with what I understand yeah. as well. So I don't... I'm not, yeah, I'm not quite sure about, about 1600s. Yeah. It doesn't uh, look 1600s. Everything was made out mainly of, like, wood and stone. Yeah, precisely, yeah. It's quite odd, yeah. yeah. So that was, of course, the... Um, <coughs> how the mortuary was set up and in the 1930s. Um, and yeah, and over time, uh, the building itself actually became grade two listed in 1991. And it was listed as a mortuary rather than waterworks. Um, and it's located, currently it's located within the Sunfield Starhill Conservation Area um, from Rochester to Chatham. Um, the building itself has been listed for its architectural interest uh, particularly as a garden building, uh, really eye-catching sort of structure between the two towns. Um, and the mortuary's architectural value is, most of all comes from its really unusual sort of mini castle appearance that we talked about. Um, and yeah, it's quite interesting. I, I haven't seen anything like it in the area. No, so what- I think the nearest I've come to see, it is very, very folly-like. When, um, when I lived in Sweden, uh, Swanscombe we'd often go towards Dartford area and have mm. an explore and growing up there was an abandoned abbey called Ingress Abbey um mm. that's in it's now been converted into flats actually again really beautifully and um that had in its grounds some follies um yeah. and a, a small cave as well with stone heads on it and it was um yeah and that was that's the nearest kind of thing that I've seen to that of things that you would see in castle grounds and mm. big abbeys so but Chatham House is very grand and he did have a lot of money that mm. <laughs> what was it? I can't remember his name but yeah he he had a lot of money who who lived in there he'd bought boats and um yeah so it kind of makes sense that he had a folly <laughs> absolutely <Yeah. laughs> why wouldn't you it's just such a shame that it's hidden from like the um, the high street, really, and that it's not not very visible, um, uh, and that you know the houses are kind of hide, well, the shops are kind of hiding it, but yeah, absolutely, yeah, um, and yeah. So in terms of like the present day, how the actual um, mortuary or the original waterworks looks internally behind the walls, it's pretty much retaining just the fixtures of its most recent use and has quite a simple layout over two floors, the ground floor and the first floor, the first floor primarily being offices. Um, and unfortunately there's no original sort of evidence of its use as a waterworks. Um, there's nothing really there. Main, mainly all you've got is really yeah, just a date on the building saying 1809 and Hulk. So unfortunately we have lost, I suppose, you know, the original use of it over the, over the years. Um, yeah, and I wonder think... whether they would be piping water from it mm. to uh, like under the because that could again link towards tunnels if their water was being taken under the road through a pipe yeah. rather than being carried because that would be that would be long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think that gives like a brief overview of sort of the hospital, how those you know the the wards change and the facilities change in sort of in line with the changing needs of the local population. Um, and I think I'll hand over to you, Natasha, to take us through like the overview of the wards, um, particularly from what people have told us, um, which ward was where, how it was located and how it was arranged overall. Yeah, I think we've still got a lot to unpick here. So yeah, yeah. and we're particularly interested in exactly where in the building wards were and maybe what their final names were, because we've also had a... William of Who ward thrown in which I feel like I remember being around from like in the 2000s before it closed and Mm. I feel like there were more names that were more like um, what you would find in Medway Hospital Um, and I also feel like like maybe it wasn't Gundolf it was Bishop or so I don't know I just feel like there were some changes before it closed but the moment um, we've got a picture that we're working from. Uh, okay. And so hopefully this will help people to help us. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Right, okay. So at the moment, uh, we believe that one is Sheppey Tower. 
over here if I walk, work from this side. So yeah, we believe that one or a kind of, I guess the top floor would be was Sheppey Tower, which was the male medical ward, but had been a female medical ward previously. Then we believe that at the bottom of here, so here, so I think there's one, two, three, yeah, apparently there's four floors. So there was another ward here that that would have been um, the Spong ward. Um, and that may have been originally the Lock ward. And I, I don't think they specifically said from what I was reading how many floors the Lock ward was. It was just in, in the West Wing. Yeah. I mean, if it's 30 beds, I would say looking at that kind of Nightingale ward layout, I would have said that that would probably have been two floors, wouldn't you? Like looking at those yeah. photos of where people have explored the, like the size of those rooms and how spacious they like to have the beds, the social distancing <laughs> yeah. that was occurring, plus also having treatments, I would have thought that that would have to be two floors. Two floors, yeah. So I would assume that actually that would have yeah but so whether spong was both floors um the fourth and the second that's not the ground floor is it no um yeah i don't know and then whether sheppy tower was the first and second floor or ground floor first floor don't know for sure then this is the mysterious area over here that george mm. was talking about earlier where um we have got photos to show that there had been um a building there um but i need i'd need to uh dig that out but it's just an aerial photo that shows it's not very exciting actually it's just literally an aerial <laughs> photo that shows that there was some sort of single story probably like concrete it didn't look very exciting did it it looked like it was yeah. probably corrugated metal on the top but there was something there and there's not really any record of what it was. So no, yeah. help us find out. Um, nine um, was, yeah, Ludford Cooper, male surgical, um, non-emergency, had been female medical. So that was as soon as you came in. So ground floor uh, to the left as you came in through the entrance. Um, and then eight was male medical surgical and orthopedic so ground floor right as you go in all of this is assuming from what people have said that um i don't know whether that person replied to my question about was this when the entrance was seen as being the front of the hospital not the back hmm. i didn't i because they're also if you parked at the back then the entrance would be at the back so we're uh, but yeah so these might be round the wrong yeah. way <laughs> they might be Maybe. opposites but i feel like this is matching up in line with the west wing so i think i yeah. think we're, i think we're right um and then uh number three was mcculloch which was again male surgical but non-emergency uh, and then hmm. four not sure this is where, because originally I thought that maybe this had been the children's ward, but no, it doesn't seem like it was. Um, so not sure about that. Uh, okay, obviously nurses accommodation over here. Yeah, actually, whilst we're there, that bit just below it with all the trees. Oh, yeah. Yes. That was, yeah, that's where the tennis court was actually. Won't okay. let me zoom out now. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, oh, so that was, okay. yeah, that was a tennis court. Um, and I'm assuming that may have been used as overflow car park over the years afterwards. I'm not sure. I don't know if there'd be a way in though, would there? Mm, I think it's from the, yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then car park here. It's interesting about this, but it's really funny because it doesn't look like a 20s building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's really a dull building. And for 20s, I, maybe it was like 20s, 30s. Because if you think of the 20s buildings in the high street, right, they're mm. beautiful. Like, they're so yeah. ornate. And this is just, this reminds me of something from the 50s or 60s. But whether... Yeah, that's, that yeah, that's, that's an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting point because they did refurbish it, um, as we mentioned yeah. earlier, about 1950s, somewhere yeah. around. Yeah. So whether they sure. stripped it 
whether mm. they just you know because it was obviously this was all before things were listed so whether they yeah. modernized it yeah and kind of i don't know yeah literally refurbished it and made it look more 50s 60s i don't know because it's a bit odd and it's a shame the aerial photos won't give us enough information to tell us mm. that because it's just like blurred as soon as you <laughs> you're like there's yeah. a building and then that's it um obviously this would all be car parking and then here is the waterworks or the mortuary here um and then this was uh the uh this was used um for like this is offices really so but the sexual yeah. health were based here but apparently also somebody's told me that um there was also um a uh uh, the children's ward when the children's ward transferred to medway it became out of patients and the, they also worked within sexual health so maybe i don't know maybe there's a connection because we've still got this building here yeah yeah so we still don't know well, what wards were in this or maybe because there's a gap in between so we also have the question of with the lock ward they had a recreation ground the lock there's no way they would have got the women to walk from there over to here no way so it must have been in in this area so whether this area was a recreation ground it isn't quite a dip so i think they could have closed it in like they said they were going to have fences and walls up i think yeah. that is entirely possible um and then when the lock ward closed maybe they put up that temporary kind of structure i think that's probably what we're looking at but it'd be really interested um uh to see here and the other thing that really fascinates me about this right is that this graveyard ha seems to have nothing to do with the hospital it's purely just to do the synagogue yeah which that's, is yeah that's something that came so interesting well. yeah and it doesn't seem like the uh oh, slightly off the map here but it doesn't seem like the church had a graveyard the chapel had a graveyard either mm. it's very interesting so i don't know where bodies were going but yeah no it's 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 really odd oh really. i should list off some of the other wards as well so the other wards that we're not sure about is um i think i mentioned gundolf uh yeah so uh, william of who shelley helen lloyd featherstone uh and watts so they're the ones that we're not sure where they are um, and then if anyone has any other names, then that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic. Uh, yeah, I've also got a, got a OS map from 1953, actually, which should maybe hopefully jog some more memories from people, if you could see it there. Yeah. Oh. So there you can see you've got, of course, the main building, the tennis courts towards the right. Yeah, that's a really good map. Yeah, um, you've got the nurses block over there towards that corner of the site. And of course, this is where the mortuary yes. was, the original Waterworks building, which of oh. course served the brewery at 351 up there, Chatham yeah. House. And of course, you've got the synagogue and the land behind it too. Um, but yeah, it's quite interesting that, yeah, here you've got this building in existence, right, 1953, and it seems to be uh, connected with a walkway. In oh, between yeah. the raised walkway from what I've what I've seen as well um in the talks. But yes, this building here in this corner, oh, now yeah. demolished, which is really what yeah, date was this again? What date was this? Uh this mounts from 1953, yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that building because it disappeared, or is it, it was there, it disappeared in the 90s, wasn't it? I was it yeah. I yeah. by the 90s it, it had already gone. Oh. Um and of course it was built in 1932, roughly. So right. it's quite interesting was there you know an additional ward here that maybe we've actually listed i don't know yeah uh, yeah was it just offices mm. um because obviously there were off offices scattered throughout as well yeah. um something yeah something that was quite interesting for both of us was actually how close the railway line was to the yeah hospital. we just ha i yeah, had not realized at all no. until i no. looked on google earth and i was like What's that big ditch? And I was like, oh my goodness, it's That's the train cool. line. Yeah. Like, I just completely, in my head, the train line just right, because so that must be the one that goes 
I don't even understand. I need to like look again on the map because in my head, it's just a straight line all the way from Chatham. Mm. But no, yeah, 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 because the the train lines over there in my head, but it's not. <laughs> it's it's cuts <laughs> through. It must cut through and do that. Like, yeah. And go round and then come out into Rochester. So, and I can't even remember it. That must be the other end of the tunnel. I don't know. Mm. That must be the end yeah. of the other end of the tunnel when you come out of Chatham. So yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. So yeah, more research there. If you search on YouTube, ebb and flow uh intra walk, I think it's called. Yeah. Um then I'm pretty sure that he covers a little bit about the waterworks, um, but mainly about the breweries. Yeah, if anyone does have any sort of like answer to our own questions, then that'll be fantastic because we'd definitely like to know what's where. Um, I think something else would be quite nice to quickly cover is, yeah, that in terms of like the plants and vegetation, because of course we saw like the tennis court, for example, is covered in trees now. Um, so what's quite interesting is, yeah, that the hospital site, particularly now, is full of all sorts of tall herbs and um, scattered scrubland um, but it's also it's a lot of scattered trees and short sort of perennial vegetation I think it's called and ephemeral ephemeral if I'm not wrong um, all sorts of yeah when I came across the report um, right. but in terms of trees it was predominantly sycamore oh really um, yeah predominantly oh about. they do go everywhere to be honest yeah <laughs> Yeah, there were actually a few that were self-seeded in the site right. um, that they came across. Um, but a few of them were and currently are in a poor condition, um, right. suffering from leaf, uh, leaf, yeah, from leaf dysfunction, bark dysfunction, and a lot of extensive ivy burden as well. Um, oh, yeah. And across the site, across the site, particularly around the car parks, there's a lot of weeds and general layer um, that is quite prevalent across the site as well. Right, okay. Be sycamores quite... are quite like they are everywhere, aren't they? they are. Not exactly a protected tree, so no. yeah. They, I'm sure they'll put more tree. They're putting in a little garden and everything anyway, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. So it will be replaced. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess something else that would be quite nice to cover in this session will be, of course, the railway accident yeah yeah the use of that ho the hospital so um yeah so there was uh the up the upchurch railway disaster of august 1944 whoa oh, hold on to your <laughs> hold on to your trousers <laughs> yeah um it was quite a uh quite a story of how it all um happened actually let me bring up the, the picture of the actual crash um so uh so yeah so this is the train crash which happened on oak lane in upchurch um which for those of you that want to know where it is now uh you probably there's a lot of roads in um Raynham where there's the little railway tracks going over but this is the particular one mm -hmm. so obviously <laughs> i love the fact there's a place that really made me laugh when i was, got this up um he's watching us um yeah uh it was obviously a bit of a lower road originally because we didn't have tarmac so much back then um let's go back to yeah this accident so um yeah the train crash disaster of august 1944 so according to uh, peter woods research on the old kent history forum um in the afternoon of august the 16th Flight Lieutenant John Malloy of the RAF chased a V-1 rocket, i.e. A, a doodle bug, as we often call them, in his Tempest fighter plane over Kent. So he was chasing a V-1 no. rocket. That is bold. I know, but wait, it gets even better. So he was trying to shoot it down, mm. but he was failing. He managed to flip it over with the wing of his plane. No way. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So it works, um, really? but it meant that it obviously, because they're, they're on target, aren't they? So yeah. he knocked it and then it was shaken. And so it then started to fall. Tumble, um, yeah. 
and basically by really bad luck it landed under the bridge in oak lane the actual doodle bug exploded and completely destroyed the bridge Dang. as a train was coming like a train was like on its way so not only that there was a railway worker that had obviously heard this happening and was hiding under the bridge so he was unfortunately killed because it landed that's right. bad luck isn't yeah. it it was not his day at all because no. he went there to hide um so yeah um it says as the 3 35 p.m victoria to ramsgate train with about 400 passengers aboard approached the bridge from Raynham. the driver didn't notice a problem until he saw smoke directly ahead but by that point it was too late both he and the fireman desperately tried to stop the train. I don't know where the fireman came from. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where he's right. I can't even imagine him running. Stop! Stop! Um, I don't know what he would have been able to do to stop the train. Um, uh, but yes, um, like uh, they, um, they, yeah, it was it failed, and the three front carriages uh, crashed um, into the gap, which is kind of interesting because. It's not into, it's not like it fell in because it's quite a small road, um, mm. but obviously kind of fell and unbalanced. Um, so the it says the third coach mounted the wreckage in front of the fourth coach and was left hanging over the gap. So I guess they kind of all buckled and twisted. It would have not been yeah. a good ride at all. So everyone was obviously passengers that could, jumped out, was trying to rescue people um and um yeah everything was kind of thrown everywhere that both the driver and the fireman survived oh, really? be absolutely incredible i don't know how i don't know whether he <laughs> maybe because <laughs> maybe because he was going fast it kind of you know yeah. done the whole kind of gran turismo <laughs> <laughs> jump over the brick but yeah absolutely amazing um and then yeah after clambering from the wreck the fireman rang along the track in the direction of the newington signal post to issue a warning so that there weren't any more trains um and fortunately um the the train that was traveling to london had already been held up at sittingbourne otherwise it could have got a lot worse um mm -hmm. so yeah doctors ambulances and passers-by all obviously started to help the yard um wrvs were soon on the scene um which was i believe i think that was the women's uh volunt voluntary sector of uh the war um and there was a cafe nearby called the rest tea rooms um which ended up being a temporary hospital um as doctors wow. and medical staff rushed to help so most of the injured were sent to St. Bart's. That was the nearest hospital, obviously quite a straightforward trip from yeah. uh, there along kind of Watling Street towards St. Bart's. Um, it says that apparently the East Gazette of August 1944 said that 12 passengers were killed and 34 injured. But they, they said recent research suggests actually that less people were killed, which is incredible. And mm. the more people, far more people were injured. And um, Sarah Baldwin and Mr. McMullen, um, they both had to have their leg amputated at St. Bart's, um, but they did um, recover really, really well, um, which was recorded. Um, and obviously a new uh, bridge was built and apparently that is the bridge that is there today. Wow. So, that's, yeah, pretty. That's a really, yeah, really nasty accident though to yeah. happen. Um, but... It's good to know that everyone leapt into action, particularly St. Bart's, has been able to, you know, to facilitate all the um, you know, medical treatments for those affected. Fantastic. It would have been such a big, you know, obviously there was lots of different bombings and things happening during the war, but, um, and I'm sure that, that, you know, that hospital was not one of the reasons it was there, but um, yeah, the fact that it was able to um, support the community in that way was um, really important because that would have been such a big kind of disaster and just mm. quite bizarre circumstances in all honesty yeah <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah so i think um is there anything else to cover for this session 
no uh, so we're gonna put that we'll put the video out later from the welcome collection uh yeah. loads of great stuff in there and it's great because once we've kind of we'll take some screen grabs from that so that we can talk about more over the weekend absolutely uh, yeah and if anybody has got information about uh st bart's um that would be really good and there we go that leads in very nicely <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so definitely. So if you do have any sort of uh, memories or stories or experiences, if you either stayed, worked or even lived in the residential quarters of St. Bart's um, or know someone that has maybe a family or friend, um, please do get in touch, particularly any old photos that you may have, sort of, you know, postcards or any other sort of memorabilia, that would be fantastic. Um, so you could do that by email. You could email us at stbartsproject.gmail.com. Um, by social media, you could just search up Future Chatham on either Twitter or Facebook. And same applies to CreatorBot as well. You could get in touch through those platforms as well. Um, and, and on Instagram as well, actually. Um, not to forget Instagram as well. You could get in touch there if you've got anything. Um, or by post, particularly if you may have maybe family or friends, uh, particularly, you know, who prefer uh, doing stuff by hand or if they're in a care home, in particular, we like to engage with care home residents. Um, they could also uh, talk to us by post on St. Bart's Project, uh, Intra, um, 337 to 341 High Street, Rochester, in Kent. So that really yeah, wraps up uh, today's session. Of course, this project is um, part of the Meadow Council Heritage, uh, High Street Heritage Action Zone. Um, and we'd like to uh, thank, of course, Meadow Council for facilitating this. Uh, Historic Kingdom for the funding, as well as National Lottery Heritage Fund and the support from Arts Council England. Um, so yes, if you've uh, missed any of our sessions from the past week, uh, from Monday to Thursday, then do go back, have a watch. Um, they are coming out soon as well on YouTube and on the Future Chatham website, so you could have a look there as well. But yes, in the meantime, do get in touch. And of course, we've got two more live sessions. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, we'll be looking at the future of the hospital. Um, it's more recent uses, particularly as a homeless shelter, um, but we'll also be looking at the hospital's future uh, now that the scaffolding has gone up. Um, so we'll discuss that and just clarify any sort of facts that people may need to know about what's happening to it. And on Sunday, we'll just wrap up this week's project um, and we'll also take a particular look at its 900th, 900th anniversary, which was celebrated a few decades ago um and a special someone a royal figure went to the hospital as well to celebrate so we'll cover that so i think that's today's session ultimately yeah. um anything else to add natasha nope i think that's it yeah thank you very much that's it. so thank you everyone for tuning in um yeah i'm just looking for the comments as well it's everyone saying thank you so yes thank you for tuning in and we really do look forward to seeing you again soon thank you yeah thank you everyone Bye-bye.